Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi-monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small-scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka welcoming you to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. A few months ago, we ran a story in our magazine where Jerry Hicks explained how he made a replacement walking plow handle from a hickory tree he felled in his woods. We thought it would make a good episode, so we asked him to make another for us while we filmed him doing it. He began by explaining the difference between the sapwood on the outside, the heartwood in the middle, and the rest of the log, which is the part he uses to make a handle. The sapwood, you know, that's the newest growth on the outside, and it tends to be the softest wood in a case like a fence post or something that's going to rot away fast. Uh, anything that's... Because it's more living. Right, right. Um, and this, especially the center, this is the heartwood through here, you can't use it because, for one thing, it's the earliest growth in the tree. It's got all the knots, the twists, and all that on it that, that make it where you can't really, you wouldn't be able to work it. It's going to be weak. Um, a tree, on, if you get it up on the ridge top where the wind can hit it, the wind's constantly whipping that tree, and it'll get what's called shakes through the center and it'll be weak places where the grain started to pull apart and you don't want that either. So I make my plow handles about an inch to an inch and an eighth thick and two inches wide. So I would like to get a two inch piece of good wood on either side of this uh, so that I can get handles out of each quarter. Now I make, I make my mauls and that's a fro maul right there. It's, it's smaller and it's made so you can hit the fro with it. Uh, I've got bigger uh, mauls that I use. And I would normally use, if I was splitting something larger, I would use it. Um, if I split fence posts or something like that out with it, I'll use it. Um, but these right here, I make them out of dogwood. Uh, it's a good hardwood. Um, any hardwood will work. Um, you can see here, how that's already started to split down through there. Uh, that's a fairly straight split and I'm gonna go with that. If you take your wedge and just draw a line across here with it, and I mean like this, just you know, hitting you a line across here. As straight as you can, it don't have to be perfect. Like I said earlier, none of this has to be perfect. But if you draw that line all the way across like that, when you go to split this, that split tends to follow that. All right, we'll get her started here. Okay, we got the split starting. Now hickory splits a little harder than oak. Tip that up and start it. To... Now we're lead. What we're doing, we're leading this split down the log. And you can see it's starting to run right on straight there. I heard this once compared to playing the xylophone. It's splitting pretty good. As we get higher up the log, I have to worry more about knots and twists and things like that. 
Up the tree, you mean? Up the tree, yeah, yeah right. I can hear the talking now. It's a, wanting to come apart. We might use that glut after all. It doesn't have a real good bevel on it. I need to go back and clean this up. You've got to have a good bevel on a glut or if it's too wide, which this one is in places, the log will spit it back out. It split plumb through there. All right, and you can see how that heart is running down the length of that. I mean, every, a little bit. yeah, everything uh -huh. that's walked through these woods probably has rubbed on it, trees fell on it, all this stuff to make it twisted and knotty and shifting like that. We're back with Jerry, who's shaping a walking plow handle. During the first split of the log, Jerry's fro maul, made from dogwood, developed a split itself, and Jerry had to retrieve the larger maul he uses for splitting fence posts. He's now splitting one of the halves into quarters. I use this for, I drive posts with it, and you can stand on the tailgate of a wagon and set a post and drive it right in if it's rained, you know. And you can see it makes a little difference in the split. Seller can take that and go on and get it done. Now see right there is a knot. Yeah. Now we're going to try to split this again. I'm pulling all this poison ivy. I started it with the small wedge because I didn't want to swing that big one for tight, close-in work like that. Let me see. It would be good if I had brought something to... All right. That's got it started. I do like them small. Malls for that kind of stuff, starting them. Yeah. That bigger mall sure making short work of that. Good thing I am from Carter County working on a hillside like this. <laughs> All right, what we'll do, I'm gonna take this piece here and we'll go over there to that log that I was using for a break. But uh, a break is a forked log like this. And what you would normally do, like cut that off right here and go back about five or six feet so you got some weight on that other end You'd set that end up on the ground on a stump or something to get it up. This is a good working height right here. Okay. But what this is going to do, this fork will, it acts as another pair of hands to hold the other end of that piece of wood you're splitting. What I'm going to start working the split through here and I'm using this fro and I'll, I'll tip down with the handle to work that split down the log. Well, that fork out there is going to capture the other end and let me get leverage on that to work the split. Now, 
if the grain wants to run out, you always want to keep the thickest part down. So if it runs down, it's going to get thicker on the other side, I'd flip it over and that will guide that split back into the thick part of the wood. And you want to try to find a center as best you can. All right, so I'm going to start right about there and see if I can drive that in there. All right, we've got the split started there and it is already starting, you can see, it's starting to run this way a little bit. So I'm gonna flip it over so that this thicker side is down, which I'm a little disheartened to see it happen that fast, but I'm trying to stay out of the way so you can see what's going on here. All right, so we've got it in there and you'll start that split. And we've got it running back. You can see here, it had started running that way. Now you can see it's curving back that way. We put the thick side down. We're bringing the split back in closer to true. I'll work that down. It's still running pretty good. It's gonna be thicker on one side definitely than the other, but that's all right. We're at the end already and it's split good all the way down. All right. Now that's a pretty good split right there. It's followed the grain. We're back with Jerry as he continues to shape a replacement plow handle. He now trims the blank he split from the log using a hewing axe before he takes it to the shave horse. We get this pretty close. We can take her down pretty quick with the shave horse and draw knife. But I'm just trying to get that heartwood out of it and get it to where I can work with it. And you want to be careful working like this. You don't want to stick that hatchet in a kneecap or in a foot or something. So try to angle out away from yourself. I'm getting pretty close to my line there. Okay, and I got pretty close on this end with the hatchet. And it's, again, this is another one of those tools that has a single bevel and you work it a certain way. I always work mine with the bevel down. If you work it this way, it's going to dig in just like a plow and it'll keep running deeper. Some people, you know, they'll get her down close and dress it on down with a spoke shave and that's fine. Mainly what I'm doing right here is I'm working to a flat face, uh, as flat as I can and still get relatively where I want. I mean, I've got about an inch thickness there and I'm right about two inches wide in this place. 
and that's kind of what I want. Um, and like I said, I don't know what kind of plow I'm going to put this on, or I may let somebody else have it for their plow down the road. So I'm going to leave it in the rough long, and we're going to work the round on it. But I'm going to try to kind of get the thickness down and get a flat face for reference. Like I told you, I need to make some hay fork handles, and I would do them basically the same way. Um, work them to square and then you knock your corners off and turn your square into an octagon and then you take your octagon and you work those angles off and you just keep working to the round. I don't know if I mentioned or not but uh, I meant to early on that your whole reason or my reason for preferring a uh, split and rived handle over a saw. This is just going to be stronger. And where I'm shooting for an inch thickness and a two inch width, with split wood you can actually use a smaller, you can get by if I went to seven eighths or even three quarters and it's going to be just as strong as a sawed out inch piece of wood. So we'll go a foot and a little bit. We'll put her right there. All right, so from right about there, I'm gonna start that grip. Um, let's see. All right, now basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this to round uh, and you start by taking the sharp edges off. You know, I, I like to use basically kind of a pistol grip, uh, but you want something that feels comfortable in your hand. Right. Uh, and that's, that's really what you're working towards. Um, I'm gonna dress this down as close as I can with the draw knife. I'm gonna knock the rough spots off probably with a cabinet scraper. This is a cabinet scraper. And uh, all it is, and they're easy to make. We used to make our own. I worked in a cabinet shop basically you'd use this in place of a sander uh, to dress to, you know to bring something down to flat smooth and true you can get a smoother finish with a scraper than you can with sandpaper because you're not putting all those little fine uh, sandpaper all you're doing is you're making the marks smaller every, yeah you're making smaller scratches every time yeah with this the way this works you take a thin piece of metal and you can take a a file fine file or uh, uh, even a sharpening stone, and you dress this flat. Uh, you want it flat and smooth, and then you take a burnisher, which you could use a, a, a round punch or a screwdriver handle, any kind of hard metal, and you'll roll that along that edge and keep doing that until you're working that over and you're creating a burr, because the burr is what's going to do the scraping. Okay. I'm scraping this kind of sp smooth now with the intention that when I put this on the plow, I'm going to scrape and dress more um, because, I mean, you know, I'm going to be holding to this all day right. and I'm going to find surfaces that are like right. right there. It's a little bit rough now. It may not be that way or it may be worse after I boil it. Um, but, uh, you know, you're out there in the field of plowing. You can uh, say so you might do the same thing with your pocket knife. You find a a high spot on it or a place that's bothering you, you can dress it down the same way. And you can see I'm getting a good shaving rolled up there. Uh, you're not gonna keep your knife very sharp if you do much of that. Uh, basically, I think for getting this bent, I think we're at a good point and we're ready to, to put it in the water and boil. I think that's going to work just fine. That's going to work just fine. So, let's see what we've got here. It's 10 to 2. We'll come back at uh, 10 to 3, and I think we'll be in pretty good shape. I like, I like this particular handle, and this was the handle that came off of the plow. Uh, like I said, I, I'm using the number 12 Vulcan walking plow. And if you've got old, old handles, I would say save one for a pattern. 
uh, it's good to use the original as much as you can. So I had had a jig made on this board before and my pegs had gotten broken off. So we're gonna try this to make a new one. Basically what you need, you'll need a peg here and here to capture that. And then you'll need a series of pegs here to create your radius. And then we'll come over here and put a keeper peg in uh, to keep it from flexing back once we bend it. And basically, once we get this handle bent and in place, you'll leave it there until there's no tension on the keeper peg. Now usually what I do, um, I try to talk when I'm working and I can't do both at the same time. What I usually do, I'll drill these, get my pegs in place and bend the handle and I'll drill the last hole after I get the handle where I want it. As long as it's the pegs popping and not my handle, we'll be all right. The other handle's gonna crack. Uh, we didn't boil it enough. That's a usable handle, but it's not ideal, obviously. Um, it just didn't get boiled enough. Uh, well, I'm gonna go ahead and put me a peg in here. I mean, I want to say these kind of things happen, and of course they always happen when there's a camera handy. Right, right. That'll dry or and cool, and it'll be set um, about a week, and the tension will be gone off of that peg. I think what we've done here, I think this uh, is it's split in the in the sapwood. I just think there may have been a weak spot in the grain here. Uh, that's what I think happened, and that's that gets back to maybe if you'd used a bigger log. Maybe if I'd used a bigger log, you wouldn't have um, had any sapwood. Right, right. There's a good chance once this cures, right, I could take my draw knife and shave this down right here. Right. And this is still a usable handle, and it's right. still a good solid handle. Uh, I mean, I would still use this handle. Okay. I, and I'm going to take, like I said, when this is set, and I pull that peg out. I'm going to take my draw knife and I'm going to I'm going to cut it back to right there at least and round that. It, it'll probably cut a little more than that. And that's just what Jerry did. A week after the handle had dried, he used his draw knife and trimmed away the wood where it had cracked and he ended up with a handle he could use on a variety of implements. We had to abbreviate some of the steps in the procedure for this half hour show. To see more of the handle shaping process, visit our Rural Heritage on YouTube channel. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information, or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.